The Wild Atlantic Way is a 1,600-mile scenic route that follows Ireland's rugged western coast. Ireland is only 300 miles long and 170 miles wide, but its many peninsulas create a seemingly endless coastline. We've broken this episode into three different sections. In section one, we ride the southwestern peninsulas of Sheepshead, Barra, Kerry, and Dingle. Section 2 covers the central part of the route through the Burren and Connemara areas. The third section features the northern part of the route, including Akeel Island and County Donegal. The peninsulas of southwestern Ireland, particularly the Ring of Kerry, are some of the most visited places in the country. We were there in April when the traffic and crowds were still fairly minimal. Pretty nice campsite right by the ocean. After riding through large patches of farmland to get to the Wild Atlantic Way, we were awestruck by the jagged rock formations and tempestuous waves along the coast. Riding through Castleton Beer on the Barra Peninsula. Uh, the Wild Atlantic Way has just been stunningly beautiful, but the weather has been extremely challenging. It's kind of lightly raining right now, and it's been like that for like a week. We knew the weather in April in Ireland was going to be our biggest challenge of doing this route, but you're still just kind of caught off guard by how ridiculously unpredictable it is. We have to walk through this sheep enclosure to go to this ring fort. I'm hoping I finally get to pet a lamb.
We're headed into Kenmare today, finishing up the Ring of Barra, circuit around the Barra Peninsula. One of the things about riding in Ireland is that the roads are extremely narrow. This is a two-way L road, and at any moment, somebody could come flying around a corner, and oftentimes there's just blackberries on the side of the road, no real space to get off. So it's, it's not a huge deal because there's usually not much traffic, but it is something that is uh, a little bit challenging at times. But it is nice that there are so many options. Um, you can pretty much always find a road like this that parallels a more main road. And the thing with the main roads is that they're often not much better. <laughs> they're definitely a little wider, but they often don't have bike lanes and a little bit treacherous when people try to pass you and there's oncoming traffic. We're at the Ardgroom Standing Rocks, 11 rocks, 3,000 years old. We've seen a handful of these really neat stone circles. This one's in a cool spot on the Barra Peninsula. Ireland has some insanely steep grades. We just gained 650 feet in about a mile. Still a little bit more to go. Raining as usual.
Peninsula is our favorite peninsula. <laughs> this is gonna be our campsite for tonight. Not a bad view. close to the top of the Connor Pass on the Dingle Peninsula. It's one of the highest points in the Wild Atlantic Way. About 1,300 feet elevation, I think. But you do it all in about three miles. Straight up from the water. Whew, fun climb with a steady headwind, too. another campsite on the beach and this one comes complete with a nice herd of cows. There are lots of baby cows romping around earlier which is pretty cute. After riding the Dingle Peninsula we went through Traley and are now on the Loophead Peninsula. Uh, it's a very narrow peninsula it's only about two or three miles wide but the loop we're doing around it is going to be about 40 miles came into this uh, field and there was no fence. It seemed like not a cow field. This is what we woke up to. The central part of the Wild Atlantic Way has a lot of diversity in its landscapes. From the famous Cliffs of Moher to the limestone wonderland of the Burren and remote mountains of Connemara, there is a beautiful place around every bend of the road. been really lucky to have some great campsites in Ireland. 
a lot of places you'd have to pay quite a bit of money to sleep with a view like this, but yeah, the wild camping has just been incredible here. We're currently riding through the Burren, which is an area of karst limestone topography that's really unusual. Lots of uh, really cool geology in this area and just kind of bizarre rock formations that I haven't really seen anywhere else in the world. Ireland has been pretty devoid of cycling infrastructure, so we're kind of surprised to find this nice bike lane separated from traffic between Kinvara uh, and Kilcolgan on the way into Galway. We're not actually on the EV1. The EV1 goes up more inland, but uh, this is worth riding. We stopped to eat some rhubarb pies and the guy who owns this land pointed out that this is a thousand, several thousand year old ring fort um, over in these trees. Just stopped here for lunch, happened to be next to ancient archaeological site. It's amazing. Ireland's awesome. So after leaving Galway, the Eurovela 1 veered off inland up into these mountains. This is the first time we haven't been riding really close to the coast. Well, I guess other than the Burren area, but it's uh, kind of like the Wicklow Mountains. Almost no traffic up here. Pretty steep climb, but it's a nice break from uh, riding the coast and farmland. We slept in this morning because it was raining and we didn't feel like getting out of bed, but it cleared up now and we've got a nice view from our tent. Oh, you're gonna knock my bike over. Oh, he's on your seat. Uh, I don't have feet. <laughs> he's not jumping on me. Rainy day, but we made a dog friend. Well, we had over a week of sunny weather, which is really nice, but now we're kind of back to the standard Irish weather, with a lot of misty rain and wind. <laughs> but we're in this cool kind of alpine looking area with lots of lakes and stuff. So it's still pretty scenery.
So today we passed the 1,000 mile mark in Ireland. Uh, we've still got about another 600 miles to go depending on where we decide to take the ferry to Scotland from. And I'm just continually surprised by the variety that Ireland has. You know, initially we were kind of following the coast and all the different peninsulas and they were starting to, I mean, they were beautiful, but they were starting to feel kind of similar. And now we are in Connemara and this fjord we're in is just spectacular. It's like something out of Iceland or Norway. Last night was a pretty memorable camping experience. We were invited to camp on a sheep farmer's land and we got to meet his whole family. He invited us in for hot whiskey, which was really amazing on a cold night. And the next morning he offered to make us rashers, which we didn't know what that was at the time, but it was the full Irish breakfast, so it was regular sausage, blood sausage, bacon, uh, an egg from their farm, peas and toast. So it was just, yeah, an amazing way to start the day and just a really nice experience getting to talk with the family for a while and ask a thousand questions about sheep farming. <laughs> so yeah, it was really, really wonderful evening. We rode a lovely greenway out to Akeel Island and continued through sparsely populated County Mayo. In County Donegal, we deviated from the coastal route to go through mountainous Glenbig National Park before finishing the Wild Atlantic Way in Derry. We're camping on the Akeel Sound tonight and rode a really nice greenway today. Riding on an end road in County Mayo, it's one of the quietest parts of Ireland so far. Just peat bogs to my right and occasional houses over here on the left. We're cruising along with our first significant tailwind and what feels like all of Ireland. And we've got a lot of really nice coastal scenery and headed into Valina for a warm shower stay.
drank about 400 grams of tiramisu last night and we were too full to eat it at dinner. It's 500. 500 grams? <laughs> so we're like totally stuffed with tiramisu for breakfast this morning and now we're gonna ride in the sun. It's gonna be great. I liked it. <laughs> no, it was a little too much. one of those nights where there's just a constant unstopping wind, which makes it really difficult to set up the tent and stuff. But uh, we found a pretty nice spot tonight after kind of an all day rain. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how we sleep through the night. The sound of the wind flapping the tent drives me slowly insane, but earplugs help a little bit. Well, it's a very windy day in Ireland. Jenny broke a second spoke. This time we figured out, instead of removing these two roll-off pieces, uh, you can just take the brake caliper off, and, uh, or the rotor off, rather, and pull it up over this. I don't know how I didn't notice that last time. It's pretty frustrating, because removing this took us like an hour last time. But yeah, new spoke's already in, and um, I'm gonna chew it up and be on the road in only a half hour <laughs> instead of three hours. They've got like 80s haircuts. It's pretty sweet. What is wrong with these sheep? <laughs> We spent one month cycling roughly 1,200 miles, or 1,900 kilometers, on the Wild Atlantic Way. While the narrow roads and adverse weather made the trip challenging at times, the stunningly gorgeous scenery and friendliness of the Irish people more than made up for these difficulties. That was it! I did my one spot. Get me off this thing! 